Alright, next slide. Okay, we have gotten our done with our front and our back. We're ready to do what I call the frilly pieces. The, the pieces that make the doublet look good. Okay? Yeah, the front piece and the back piece, that's your construction pieces. That's the pieces that hold your doublet together. Okay? The main body of your doublet. The next pieces are all basically up to, going to change with the style of doublet you're making, okay, you know, what your personal tastes are, and everything else like that. I'm going to give you general terms, but these are by no means, you know, for every single doublet going to be the same. The skirting piece varies from doublet to doublet. It can be long, it can be short, it can be non-existent, okay. It can be cut into several little tiny pieces. It can be one big long piece. It just depends on what style you are going for. I'm going to show you how to make a general skirting piece that runs along the bottom of the doublet, much like this one. Okay? It adds a little bit of flair. Okay? And it makes sure that you know our doublet, where it ends at our natural waist doesn't look silly, it doesn't expose our shirt. It covers up the waistband of the pants, and if you do have ties in your doublet, like this one does, it covers up those ties. You know, it can also be a pass-through point for what we call points, okay, which are little pieces of string that come out and tie the pants onto the doublet as well. Okay? You'll see those in much later period, almost getting into uh, the Cavalier era, we, uh, where they have the, the little ribbon points that come out. You'll, you'll see those in the paintings and stuff like that. All right, so this is just a very general skirting piece. Again, this can alter and change as you, you know, decide you want to make your doublet a fashion statement. Okay? So we're going to start off with our, our general skirting piece, okay? What we want to do is we first want to draw two little curves, okay? These are complementary curves to the ones we've already drawing, drawn in our waistband. So we're going to draw a little curve here, okay? And we're going to draw a curve here. You see how it bends out the opposite direction as that curve? Everybody understand how, how, what I mean what I'm saying? Okay? What this basically does is means that this seam is going to be basically equal to the length of that seam. Okay? And this seam is going to be generally equal in length to that seam. That's all we're trying to do is equal our length. So go ahead, go for it, and I'll come around and take a look at what you're doing. Yes? Don't worry about that. We'll get to that point. Okay? So just kind of... Draw your curves. Use your wrist compasses, yeah, that we've been doing. <laughs> no. Here's my question. Yeah. If I don't have a straight curve because mine does a swoop. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to use my old squaring technique to make sure all my lines match up nice and flat. I'm going to use my 90 degree angles. Okay? I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find my 90 degree angle here as it comes down from the curve. That's going to give me the angle of my skirting piece. And then, so whatever your curve ended up being, you're going to place your ruler there and you're going to Draw straight down a 90 degree angle, okay? And then you'll come over here and you'll do the same thing, okay? The length of this line, little f to little o, is how long you want your skirting to be, okay? If you want a short skirting, okay? You know, yeah, it, nor, most skirting lengths are about four fingers, okay? If you want a lot, uh, that is equal to about three inches, by the way, okay? If you want a longer skirting, they 
make it five inches, make it four inches. You want a nice little short skirting, make it two. You know, it's whatever you want it to be. I highly suggest somewhere around three to four inches in length. That's generally long enough to give you a nice look, but it doesn't look overly long, okay? For fighting doublets, I have made them as long as six inches just to have proper overlap. But Amanda, you'll probably want a shorter one. So about three inches, because you're not going to need a lot of overlap there. Yeah. But if you want a longer one, put a longer one on. It doesn't matter. This is completely up to your desire on how long you want the skirting piece to be. On that double that I showed you earlier, it's a three inch skirting length. Okay. So you'll draw your line and you'll mark it at three inches, okay, or however long you want your skirting piece to be. All right, does everybody understand what they're going to do at this point? You're going to draw four lines here, 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 and here. Now this line's going to change just a little bit, so don't really worry about it too much. Okay, I want them to, you want these three lines. F to O, D to N, J to P. These are all 90 degrees off of your curve. Okay? Top or bottom? Bottom. The top, right here. Right here, that should be 90 degrees. That, that angle right there. That's okay? the bottom one. No, I'm sorry. That, that's the bottom. No, I mean the, the line that you're drawing off of. It. The, the curve that you just the drew. We just yeah. The Thank curve. You. You just drew. Take your ruler, watch, place it on that curve, and draw your 90 degree line down. See what I'm saying? We're not worried about this curve here because that's the, that's the back piece. We're drawing the skirting piece now. I was just confused because there were multiple lines there, so I wasn't sure which one you were using to draw the 90. Yeah, we're losing, using this curve right here and this one. The two curves that you get through. You're going to draw, you know, square down those 90 degree angles. So, if you want to come watch me do it, you can come watch me do it. All right, so I'm going to do it right here, squaring down. I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to make this a three inch skirting piece, okay? Okay, take my line, square it up with the angle. Floor length double. Okay, so draw those first three lines as they're squared up, make them all the same length. So whatever length you want your skirting to be, go with that. The final one, line, this one right here, G to little Q, is a slightly steeper line because we want a slight overlap of the point in the front, okay? Just the way the style is. So find your 90 degree angle, and you may want to come watch me do this one, okay? So you may want to come watch me do this one. Bob, are you going to come watch me do this one? I'll come over there and help Amanda out with her here in a second. Okay? But okay, so I find my 90 degree angle. Okay? I actually want something more like 110 degrees. So I'll just angle it out a little bit more. <laughs> okay? And then I take my skirt length, three inches, boom. Okay? Right? See how I did that? You know, like I said, I did these. I just went, okay, boom, mark my skirt length. You know, from the curve, make my 90 degree angle, boom, find my skirt line. Okay? That's all you want to do. Got it? Alright. Now, all we're really going to do is create this curve here. Okay? Going back to our 90 degree theory, we want 90 degree angles to make sure things end up flat. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'll place it on that straight line, and that's going to produce this 90 degree angle right there. Okay? Just a short part of it so that I can start making that curve. Same thing here. Now, the front, I just want to kind of slope into that. This point will not be 90 
degrees. If it is, something's wrong. <laughs> okay? Yeah. If you want to kind of help yourself out with the curve, you can draw your 90 degree line down from your curve here, you know, just to kind of help you get 90 degrees down there, but you don't have to. I'm about to do it on my pattern. If you want to come up and watch me do it on my pattern, you can. All right. You're going to come up, come up now because I'm about to do it. I'll give you uh, five, four, three, two. <laughs> Okay, so here are my four points, or my, my, my points. Here, that's my skirt line, just so everybody can see it, okay? Now, I know you guys love erasing lines and stuff like that because you're worried about it, and, you know, don't worry about it. When we cut it off, all these lines are going to disappear anyways because it's going to cut that paper off. So don't really worry too much about erasing lines, okay? Won't confuse yourself too much. Take my ruler, put it on that straight line, and I just draw a short line there to make sure I have that 90 degree angle right there, okay? I do the same thing on the other side, okay? And then, what I'm gonna do, just to help myself out, I'm gonna measure from the bottom of this curve here, okay, my skirt length, which happens to be three inches, okay? Now that gives me a general guideline to just kinda uh, take that through. Oh, isn't that neat, okay? Yeah. If you want to draw another little guide on there, just to kind of, okay, you know, you just want to try and make sure that this skirting is consistently around your skirt length. If it's all, you know, if it varies by a quarter to an eighth of an inch, it's not going to really matter that much, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly the skirt length all the way around. When you cut your fabric, it's going to come out fairly even anyways. Now this one's a little bit harder because it's a little bit bigger curve, but again, what I do is I square off my skirt length there, okay? And then here I'm actually going to mark several little guides at my skirt length. All I'm doing is I'm taking three, I'll do, yeah, if I see you guys can actually, but I'm three inches up from the end because that's my skirt length. I place that line on my curve. I'm using the center point right here, okay? So, yeah, I'm not, yeah, not going to be able to get this entire line on my curve, but, you know, right at the base of the curve right there, and right along the center of it, you can see, I can just kind of mark, okay? That gives me, as long as I pass through those points, a nice little thing. You see how that worked? All right? So go to it. Alright? Real quickly, you may notice uh, on your pattern piece there's going to be overlap here. Obviously if I cut this piece out and then I try to cut this piece out, there would be a section missing from one or the other. Okay? What we're going to do when we cut our pattern pieces out is we'll use a tracing wheel or you can even use tracing paper or something like that, to trace this little section out onto an extra piece of paper before we cut. And that way we can cut this little section off out of another piece of paper, and then we can cut this big section, and then we can just cut right through that because we already cut out the little section. You understand? Mm -hmm. And what's eventually going to happen is we're going to take this piece, and we're going to tape it to this piece. And it's going to make one section that's a skirt, okay? Like I said, you can have different styles. Um, there's the style where it's a bunch of little basically triangular shaped pieces. You know, they're, 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 they all look pretty much like this piece here. And there's like a dozen of them that go around, okay? That's pretty simple. You just take this piece. Make sure you know what that measurement is, that you make enough to go all the way around your waist. <laughs> you, know? uh, you can have some fun with this. You can taper it and shape it in different ways. Um, you, you, you can make this length extra long, and that way you pleat it in and you get extra volume to your skirting piece. You can have a lot of fun with this, but this is just a very simple one. 
This is the one you will see on most doublet patterns and most doublets and paintings and stuff like that, is you will see this general skirting piece. All right? So, uh, basic one, okay? How tall your collar is is going to be a matter of personal preference, whether or not you have a neck, okay? Some people, they have a very short neck, they don't want a very tall collar, okay? Other people have very long necks, okay? It's whatever you feel comfortable with. What I suggest for your pattern today is, you know, make it to the dimensions I, I say, and then when we make your mock-up, if you don't like how your collar looks or feels, we can change it. Collar is one of the easiest little pattern pieces to draw. You don't need the body block to do it. You can do this anywhere on your pattern that you have space, paper available. So you know, all you're going to need is a straight line to do this. The first thing you have to do is find out how long to make your collar piece. You want to make sure it matches with the neck hole, okay? And our neck hole is on two different parts of our pattern. We have our front neck hole, and we have our back neck hole. So what you have to do is you have to measure those, okay? Now, the other thing is, we also are gonna want probably a button stand, okay? And I didn't include a button stand on the pattern, okay? A button stand is a little bit of extra material on the front so that you have a slight overlap for your buttons, okay? Let's draw a button stand on first. Here's how we draw a button stand, okay? You're going to take your handy dandy clear ruler. You're going to find on the clear ruler where it's the half inch line, okay? A half inch button stand is more than enough for most doublets. We're not going to set our buttons in. We're actually going to place our buttons right on the edge. So a half inch button stand is perfect, okay? If you're going to set your buttons a little further in from your edge, you may need a longer button stand. But half inch is perfect for most doublets. And all you're going to do is you're going to place your ruler, and you can find that half inch line, and you're just going to fall it down, and then fall it down and then follow it down, okay? That's gonna make a button stand. I'm gonna do one real quickly on this one right here, okay? You wanna come watch me do it? It's really easy though. And this is why, Richard, your, your clear ruler may have problems. Because <laughs> it doesn't have a nice long lines on it. All right, come here, who wants to watch? Five, four, three, two, all right. Again, you can see this is a, this is a nice half inch line. That's why I like this one because it has a clearly drawn. You can see this is my line here, and here's my button stand. And I just follow the curve along. Okay, yeah. Now, now wait. On the skirting piece, typically the button stand comes right to the point. Oh, okay. Okay. That's because most period doublets are actually laced at the point. Now, if you want to put a button down there, you're going to have to make your button stand go down there. So you will have to draw it out, okay? In which case, yeah, that would be fine. Okay? So, yeah, it's up to you what you want to do, okay? So everybody understand the button stand? I'll come around and check them when I'm checking everything else. But for right now, we're going to move on, okay? The reason I wanted you to draw your button stand first is so that your collar can go all the way to the edge of your button stand, okay? You want the collar to meet at the corners where the button stand is, okay? So you need that extra half an inch of length. All right, here's what you're going to do. Pay attention, please. 
I'm going to take my ruler, which is nice and flexible, and I'm going to measure the distance around that. And then I will write it down. So this one, you know, just doing it here on the board, I get five and a half inches. Okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing on the back. It happens to be four inches on this one. And I'm going to add those two numbers together. Nine and a half inches. That's the length of your collar. Okay? Now, you may have to do some creative bending, or you may even have to whip out your measuring tape if you want to do that. But, you know, as long as you don't bend these rulers too severely, you won't break them. I have broken two in the past, just so you know. <laughs> okay? I generally like to use the center, and so I'll mark from like 6 to 11 inches. Oh, that's five. You know, I can do math in my head. Alright, so I'm going to measure this one real quick. And then I'll come around and check your button stands, okay? And what I do is I'll measure and then write it down on my pattern, okay? And like everything, you know, measure tries, cut once, you know, or measure twice, okay? Make sure you have the right measurement. It should be, most necks are not going to be bigger than 20 total inches, or 25 total inches. So if your measurement is coming out somewhere around 12, 15 inches, you did something wrong. <laughs> it should be probably somewhere between you know, 8 to, I would say, 8 to 12 inches, okay? Some, some individuals, it may be bigger, you know, especially if you've got like a bodybuilder type, big, big neck, you know, that kind of thing. And if you're really worried, you can, you know, measure your neck with a measuring tape and take it that way, all right? I'm going to check your butt. So, like, doublets, like I said, did, did not typically have really tight necks like our modern dress shirts. If, let's say, you wear a 16-inch, you know, neck for your modern dress shirt, your doublet neck is probably going to be closer to 19 or 20. Because you got to factor in your ease there, okay? Um, for instance, this pattern I'm making for Michelle ends up with a 19 in, or a 9 inch hat, you know, neck hole for my measurement, which gives her, if we double that, an 18 inch neck. Anybody who knows my wife knows she does not have an 18 inch neck. Okay? But it'll give her a nice loose here, so, well, we can put a black work collar in there, or we can put a ruff in there. And it's going to flare out and it's going to frame her face, which is what it's supposed to do. The collar is supposed to frame your face and your neck, and again, it's supposed to give you that appearance of a nice long neck. So whatever measurement you got, you add to the front, to the back, that's going to be the length of R to S. Okay? So, Either you can use this straight line that we already have up there and just mark out your measurement on that line, or you can draw some random straight line out here on your pattern and mark that distance out there, okay? I like doing it up here because I already have a nice straight line and there's usually plenty of room to do it, okay? I'm going to mark out my nine inches. Alright, once I have that length, okay, I want to determine how tall I want to make my collar, how high up I want it to go in the back. Most period collars you're looking at about a three inch collar height, okay? If you think about that, my hand width is about a three inch collar height, you can see where it's hitting the back of my neck and the back of my head. 
That's how high the collar would go. That's a standard collar height for most doublets, three inches. You can make them taller, you can make them shorter. If you really want one of those ones that kind of really flares out, it'd be a nice long collar. Just make it a three inch collar height for right now. When we make our mock-ups, if you want to change it, we can, okay? We can add length to this or you know, take length away. Make it a three inch collar length for now, okay? And we'll go there. So all you're gonna do is just draw a straight line up three inches. Well, three quarters of an inch less than uh, three inches would be two and three quarters. Oh, look, that's right there. You see how I did that? I'm three quarters of an inch. That's my point. You can see right underneath there. I made it nice and clear so I could see it through the ruler. It's three quarters of an inch in over now, and it's three quarters of an inch shorter over here because it's only two and a quarter inches above. That's it. That's that corner right there. Okay. Now watch. 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 But hey, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to make a nice little curve, okay? And then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to make a nice, I'm just going to kind of join them together with a nice little curve, okay? Now, and again, yeah, you know, this is going to depend on your artistic, you know, talents a little bit, okay? I just want to try to make this as gentle as possible. Okay? Alright? I will come around and, and check things here in a second. Now, this is not in the, in the, in the slides as well. Uh, most period collar pieces take this back collar seam and they kind of curve it in just a little bit. Okay? That's to make up for the curve in the back of your neck. Um, I have found it easiest just to keep it straight and deal with it because somehow all the time when I surge, I end up curving that line anyways. So, <laughs> you know, uh, it really, I have found it doesn't really make a difference unless your collar is longer than three inches. If you've got a, like a six inch collar length that you want to take it up to the back of your head because you wanted some kind of you know, 
Disney looking big high collar, then you're going to need a curve to compensate for the curve of your head. All right? But really honestly, the curve here I feel is, is fairly shallow and I have no issue with it. If you look at the Spanish Taylor's Handbook and the patterns in uh, Patterns of Fashion, you will see that curved line all the time. I find it easier just to make it a straight line. Completely up to you. If you want a curved line, a little less, a little T, get a, little, a shallow curve to it, and move it in a quarter inch at the halfway point and give it a little tiny curve. Okay? Uh, that will guarantee you have to make two color pieces. <laughs> uh, later on, you guys can look at Stephen's pattern. On Stephen's pattern, we did the Spanish doublet pattern. The collar's a little bit different. You'll see one at the end and, and see what I mean. Okay? Next piece. Most period patterns have something we call an epaulette. That's the tiny little piece of material that sits. Oh, there it is. That sits on. Yeah, you can see it on this one too. That sits off the shoulder of the uh, doublet. Okay, you can see it right here. On this one, it's a little more obvious. That's why I like this one because you can see the epaulette's in green. And the rest of the doublet is in white, okay? I chose to do that just because I had very little of the green material and I want a little bit of flare on this doublet, that's all. Uh, this is just to give you the illusion of broad shoulders. <laughs> Modern patterns achieve this by making the shoulder longer. Suit jackets, you will notice, in a men's suit jacket, the shoulder always extends out past your regular shoulder and they put shoulder pads in there to give you that illusion of that broad shoulder look. Problem with that is you lift your arm up and the whole suit jacket rises with you. We want to be able to lift our arms up and so we ended our doublet at the natural shoulder. And then we put the epaulette in because the epaulette moves. <laughs> okay, so you know, it, it actually basically acts as a hinge right there because we're attaching the epaulette and so it won't lift your entire doublet up when you lift your arm up. But it still gives you that lovely illusion of nice broad shoulders. Okay? In general, these, these things are shaped, again, according to whatever your personal preference is. The pattern I'm going to show you is the one I use on all my doublets. And it's a very simple, easy pattern to make. And so we're going to use that. First thing we need to do, though, is we need to know how big our arm's eye is. The arm's eye is just another name for the armhole. Okay? And so we want to measure that arm's eye. Remember how we measured our, our neck hole? Uh, now we're going to measure our armhole. You're going to measure around this curve. Write that number down. Add it to the measurement around that curve. Okay? Use your curve or, or you know, flexible ruler and that will help you out. Okay, and what you once you got that number, write it down in the middle of the uh, on the piece of paper on the pattern right there, so that you know the total number because we're going to need that for our sleeve as well. The number should be okay, and this is a nice little check here. Let me uh, get this number here, and I'll tell you. Yeah, if you remember what your chest measurement plus the ease was, and half the chest measurement plus, plus half your ease, you know, or whatever that number is, it should be really close to the size of your armhole. Okay? And if it's more than an inch off, there may be an issue. Or we may just have, you know, slightly different patterns, but we'll see. <laughs> Oh, that one. Yeah, so yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool how that number kind of matches up. So, uh, like this one, it's a total of 22 inches. Okay? Alright, so armholes are kind of going to be something that you're going to tailor to yourself. In period, they were very tight up underneath the arm. Okay? Yeah, and that is uncomfortable for most people. Okay? 
I know it takes me usually about 20 minutes to get used to my doublet once I put it on because mine are very tight up underneath my arm. Okay? It does allow for a little bit better movement, but it's not that significant, I don't think. If you are not comfortable with that, well, you just lower your chest line a little bit and open up the armhole a little bit more. That's all you really have to do. Okay? You can deepen the curves on the front and on the back to give you a little bit more room in that armhole. Completely up to you. This is why we make mock-ups after we get done with the pattern to see how it fits. And we can adjust this if we need to. All right? So, don't worry about it if your measurement's like way off. And like I said, I, I made the mistake. It's not half your chest plus these. It's just half your chest. Your armhole measurement should be fairly close to half your chest. Okay? So it should be, you know, maybe an inch or so off, but, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. Okay? Now, we're going to draw our epaulet. How long the epaulet is, how much of the armhole it covers, again, completely up to you. And what you want your style of doublet to be. Most doublets were about two thirds to three quarters of the length of the armhole. So like these armholes are 22 inches, okay? Half that's 11, about two thirds would be uh, around 14, you know, you know, three quarters would be around 16, okay? You know, maybe 17, okay? I'm going to make these eh, about two-thirds, about 14 inches in length, okay? Because my arm holds 22, two-thirds is, yeah, actually I'm going to make them 15, just to be, be silly, okay? So, <laughs> what I want to do is I'm going to draw a straight line and mark that length somewhere on your piece of paper. It doesn't have to be off to the right. It's off to the right on this one because that's the room I had on the slide. Okay, normally I draw these right underneath the skirting pieces if I have room. So that's where I'm going to draw this particular one. But I'm just going to draw a line, and I'm going to mark off my 15-inch length. Okay? If you need more paper, I have more paper. Okay? We're probably going to give people extra paper for the sleeves anyway, so it doesn't matter. Some of you probably won't have room on your paper for your sleeve anyway, so. Alright, I'm going to find the halfway point down that line. So since I used a 15 inch length, my halfway point is 7 half inches. Okay, and I'm going to mark that, and I'm going to square off so it makes like a little cross. Okay? Alright? So, what I have drawn is line B to W and line X to Y. I made a little cross. You see your little plus sign. However you want to look at it. Okay? <laughs> I just took two lines. And I crisscrossed them at 90 degree angles. Okay? Now, the length of line X to Y is double the width of your epaulet. So most epaulets, you know, three to four fingers. Okay? Three fingers is, you know, two inches, four fingers is closer to three. Okay? <laughs> Three, two, and three feet. You know. I'm going to make this, this particular epaulet about two and a half inches. Okay? You want really broad shoulders? Well, make them four inches. <laughs> yeah. So, double two and a half, well, that means my length of my line from uh, X to Y will be five inches. Centered, of course, on the line there.
those curves, right? Don't worry about matching up your curves. When we cut this out, I'll show you a neat little trick. Okay? Now, some people shape their epaulets in a rectangular fashion. You want to do that, make it more of a rectangle, you can. Uh, some people make them ovals. I like this particular pattern, but completely up to you what you want to do. Yeah, give a I don't have room. Yeah, give me a second. Alright, so go ahead, work on that, and I'll come around, and I'll get richer. I don't have sleeves in this particular set because I usually teach sleeves as a different class. Okay, I call it sleeves, wonderful sleeves. Because sleeves are something you can have a lot of fun with when you style your pattern. What I am going to show you though really quickly is the simplest sleeve pattern there is out there and it will help you out and that's the sleeve pattern we're going to use for this particular doublet. But you know, as you go through and you start making more and more doublets, we want to venture out a little bit and you know, when that happens you can come talk to me and I'll tell you how to make some really cool sleeves. Okay. Now, there are parts to a sleeve that you need to know about. The most important part you need to know is something called the cap. Okay? Sleeves have what's known as a sleeve cap. And that's the curve at the top of the sleeve. That sleeve cap is what actually gives you range of motion. And where you place it when you put your sleeve in is what really makes the difference. And we'll get to that when we do construction. Modern sleeve caps are huge, okay? They're like four to six inch caps on the sleeve. So if my sleeve was, you know, yeah, let's you know, I'm draw a general sleeve shape here, all right? This is my sleeve length. This is how long my sleeve should be to, to get to the length of my arm. The cap is the distance that it rises above the sleeve length. So, like I said, modern sleeve caps are four to six inches. And that means a big old curve up here. Okay? Period sleeve caps are actually only about two inches. Of course, modern sleeves are actually about two inches shorter on sleeve length, too. That's because modern sleeves are supposed to look good when we're standing up straight and tall. And not worried about motion. Again, I refer to a men's suit jacket. You ever seen a guy move in a men's suit jacket? The second they move, that sleeve rides up to here. You know, you know, and this is a really well-made suit jacket. Okay? And one bought off the rack, it's, it's going to rise and move all over the place. So, period sleeves are different than modern sleeves. The cap is much smaller. It's also put in a different place. The cap in modern suit jacket goes right at the point of the shoulder. And that doesn't allow for movement because where's the way, place our arm moves the most? Is when it moves across our body. Well, guess where I need the most material? Right back here. Guess where the cap goes in a period double? It goes right back here. <laughs> That's where the point of the cap goes. And that's why you'll see on my doublets, the seam actually runs right here. You know, because, you yeah, know, that's where the, uh, the sleeve, the, the cap's there. The seam is opposite the cap. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do when we construct. So we're going to make our really, really basic seam, uh, pat, sleeve pattern here, and it'll be really easy. Let me get an eraser real quick. So the first thing you're going to need is a straight line, okay? So, down along one edge of your paper, about maybe a couple inches away from the edge, all I want you to do is draw a straight line that is at least the length of your sleeve length. Whatever your sleeve length was, that's how long that line is, okay?
In most cases, this will be, uh, you know, near probably half your chest, but, you know, <laughs> depends on the person. If they're a tall, skinny person, then it ain't going to be close, okay? If they're uh, a shorter, you know, heavy set person, well, again, it's not even going to be close. So, you know, in general, you can sit there, but, you know, most sleeve length for people, for average height people, basically between you know five and a half and six feet tall, is somewhere around 22, 23, 24 inches. Okay, you know some people have long arms. Okay, that's why we make these patterns based off of measurements that we take, and not just off of some number we pull out of the air. Okay, so you know, draw your straight line. Okay, so I've got my straight line. I've marked my two points, okay? That's my sleeve length, okay? On one of the points, I'm gonna square straight up from that point. Yeah, let's see if I can draw a straight line here. <laughs> All right? And the distance on that line is gonna equal one half of my arm's eye, okay? So my arm's eye was 22 inches. That'll equal 11, all right? And I'm gonna mark that point, okay? So square straight up, mark a point that equals one half of your arm's eye. See, we do this exact same thing. Trust me, you'll see how it goes here in the thing. Only difference is, Steve, you're gonna end up cutting out too. <laughs> All right. On the other side Okay, I'm gonna do half of my duck foot, okay, which is my duck foot, plus a little bit of ease. I want a little bit of extra room in there. So I'm gonna add a finger of ease, okay? So, and again, I'm gonna draw straight up and Measure that distance. So again, this measurement is equal to one half my duck foot plus one finger of ease. Okay? That's so I can get my, my hand through when I put my sleeve on. Now, and again, this measurement here is one half my arm's eye. And this measurement here is equal to my sleeve length. Alright, now I'm also going to take this point, I'm going to move it over one finger length, one finger width here, and redraw this line at a slight angle. Okay? I'll, I'll show you guys here in a second, okay? Just listen for now. And then I'm just going to connect these two points with a straight line, okay? What this will do when I cut this out, this will be the fold that I cut on. You'll understand that when we get to cutting. And I'm going to draw like a little mini picture of what it's going to look like. It's going to look slightly like that when we get it done, when we unfold it, okay? This will be my cap, my sleeve cap up here. Yeah, and this is my wrist down here. 
And, you know, and these are, that's my seam and everything you know, Of course, this is my armhole that goes through the cap. All right? This is the super simple sleep pattern. It is the easiest sleep pattern you will ever use. It's also probably one of the best because you can make many variations off of this. Alright? Now, I'm going to draw it on mine and you can come watch. Okay? my straight line. That's my straight line right there. Okay? Okay? And I always square it up for my back line right here. That's half the distance of my arm's eye, which was 22. This equals out to 11. Okay? You guys see where I'm at right now? Let's see how I'm going to make that line square at all. <laughs> I didn't make my line very square. All right, so this is, like I said, this little wrist one, it's a little bit different. Okay, first thing I do is I square up from that, okay? Okay, and I take my duck foot measurement, which using my ribbon makes life a little easier. I want half of that duck foot measurement, okay? I measure out, there's half of my duck foot, but I want to add a little ease into that, so, you know, I'll measure, oh, Put it down here, okay, and I add my finger of ease, and that's my mark. But the wrist is not straight across. It has a little bit of angle to it. So I'm just going to move that mark over a finger width and redraw this line at an angle. See how that, see how that worked? And then I just connect the two points. Be the fold of my fabric right there, and this will end up being my cap. Okay, you guys see how I did that? Kind of cool, easy peasy sleep pack. Okay, right, I'm gonna come around, check people, make sure they're doing okay. All right. All right, so like I said, this is just a very basic, simple sleep pattern. Okay, it's not going to be fitted. Okay, some of you may have seen sleep patterns in the past where you know like one side of it it you know has this kind of curve in here and then you know the top kind of angles up there and then the other side of it you know this is the same sleep pattern you know it comes up a little bit here and this side looks something like that okay that's more of a fitted sleep pattern. And for that, you need many, many more measurements of the arm. Because arms vary in how strong somebody is. Or, you know, like fencers, we all have these massive forearms. And so most fitted sleep patterns don't fit us because we have, you know, really big forearms. We've got Popeye. You know, uh, you know somebody who works out a lot is going to have, you know, big delts and big biceps and stuff like that, you're going to have to make adjustments for that. And so, you know, I personally don't like fitted sleep patterns, okay? <laughs> this simple sleep pattern it is fitted enough to look good in a doublet, but it also gives me room to move for fighting and stuff like that, and it's so much easier. And then you can play with this and you can add, you know, let's say you want a bit of poofiness. So you extend this line up and you kind of taper it in and look, now you have some poof in your sleeve. Okay? Yeah. How much poof you put in it is how much you want. Yeah. And you can have super poofy sleeves if you want. Yeah. And then, you know, this is your outer layer and then the simple sleep pattern, that's your lining that you put in because you don't need poof in the lining. Yeah. Um, I use this, this basic method to do the uh, loose gown from Patterns of Fashion, and that sleep pattern has 18 pieces to it. <laughs> it's a really nasty sleep pattern. 
But because of my familiarity with this sleep pattern, I was able to make it and adjust to it. I took a couple experimentations and stuff like that. So when you get to a point that you really want to, you know, add a little bit of flair to your doublet with a different sleeve, experiment a little bit and that kind of thing. Uh, later on, we're going to be taking Steven's sleeve pattern and we're going to be making it into that weird folding sleeve that I showed you earlier because he wants that. And so, you know, we're going to be doing that. So, you know, sleeves are fun and you can really do a lot with them. And, you know, and just you got to play around with it. All right, so things to remember about your pattern. Okay? There are no seam allowances built into these patterns when I draw them on the paper like that. Seam allowance is something we'll, we'll discuss a little bit when we hear, get here to mock-ups. Okay? So, that's really, really important. Okay? What seam allowance you use is completely up to you. I like a half-inch seam allowance. Others like a quarter-inch seam allowance. I'm like a... 5 eighths up to an inch seam allowance. It's completely up to you what you want to use. The more seam allowance you use, the more fabric you're going you're gonna to use, you're going to need. Not much. It's not that big of a difference. But, you know, it depends completely up to you, okay? Uh, like I said, in the slides we didn't add a button stand. I, uh, we added a button stand earlier, so, I mean, depending on the style of double, you may not need a button stand. If you want to lace it up the front, go right ahead. If you want to hide a zipper in there, you're going to need a bigger flap. <laughs> that kind of thing. For our Raper doublets, we're actually going to add a modesty panel, okay, in the front. It's not truly a modesty panel, it's an overlap panel that's required by the rules so that, you know, swords cannot slip in between the buttons, okay. Uh, and again, Adjustments are going to have to be made. This is not going to fit perfectly as it is. It may not fit like you want it to. That's why we make mock-ups, and we're going to be making mock-ups, okay? That's why we got the flat sheets or whatever kind of cheap fabric you want to make your mock-up out of. How is it? Go to Walmart, find something for 50 cents a yard, that's what you make your mock-up out of. Try to make sure it's a, a cotton or at least a cotton blend. Now, and that doesn't have stretch to it. it. It cannot have a lot of stretch to it. If it's a knit fabric, don't make a mock-up out of it. Uh, some people use, oh, what's the name? Muslin. Some people use muslin to make mock-ups out of it. Muslin's just a cheap fabric that's usually used for pattern making. Okay? Uh, so you can use muslin to make your patterns out of it, your mock-ups out of it. Like I said, I use... I, I have a bunch of flat sheets, and so I just use those. Um, but you, again, whatever fabric you can find to make your mock-up out of, do so. Just remember, we're going to write all over it with a Sharpie. So. <laughs> yeah. um, this is an example of a bodice pattern that has been drawn over the body block. Okay? Uh, I included it here because a lot of you can see that you know, there's some different lines to it and that kind of thing. But it's a lot of fun. We're not really going to go through all the, all the things, you know, but yeah, it's included in your packet so that, you know, if one day you decide to make a bodice, yeah, you got to start, okay, <laughs> you know, and that kind of thing. You may notice some different things, like this, the, 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 the drop is a little bit bigger, okay, because, well, we want, you know, as Elizabethans, they're very uh, concerned with pointing to certain body parts. And so this really shows, hey, look at me, guys. Look at what I'm pointing at. Because a bodice would be very tight in the top, and for the Elizabethan, be very flat. But it would all be focused down towards the, the general groin area. Okay? But this also curves really high up over the hips. And that's because the skirt would be there, and it would flare out a little bit using cartridge pleating. And what that does is it gives you really generous hips, which means I am very good at birthing children. You know, those are beat this. That's here you go with it, you know. Again, you can see it has the curve for the women's side seam to add that extra measurement. Uh, one of the unique things we do with the, uh, the uh, straps is you can see this line here. That's the line 
of your fabric. That's your okay, line. that's your grain line. Okay, and that's to make sure this strap doesn't end up being cut on the bias. Because it is cut, if it's cut on the bias, that's what's going to happen. Your straps are going to keep falling off. You want to see the other things we do to help keep the straps from falling off? Instead of drawing this one at the same distance away, we curve it in a little bit more towards the shoulder, towards the middle of the neck. That way it's always pulling the sleeves up. Using the physics of the fabric is very, very nice. So you want to use the physics of your fabric to help make your garment move better and everything else like that. And if you think about it, if this is our, our brain line, that means this is on the bias. Where do you need more stretch, ladies? Yeah, right there in the front. <laughs> you know? And that's what helps, you know. And again, yeah, so yeah, that's what's really cool about these patterns and everything else like that. So I just include that one in the packet. There's a couple of pattern examples from the Sarter book. Um, these are just, you know, this is the Spanish doublet pattern like I was talking about. This is what we've done with Stephen's pattern. Um, you can see the back collar piece is actually part of the back of the doublet. Okay? And we've curved his shoulder down a little bit more to compensate for that. Okay? And then he has his front collar piece, you know, which is going to be sewn into this neck. And then when we sew our shoulder seam, we will sew all the way down this collar and into the shoulder. It's kind of neat. Neat little different way to construct things, okay? And if you go into the Spanish Taylor's Handbook, you'll see almost every doublet has this little back piece just like that. Okay? In fact, I think these two patterns have come directly out of the uh, Spanish Taylor's Handbook. So, again, you can, you can do things like this, and you can have fun, and you can adjust your body block for the doublet style you want. Okay? You're not locked into the pattern we just made. This is a general pattern to kind of get you started. But we can have a lot of fun, and we can be creative with this. All right, and then the last sleeve is just, you know, my name and stuff like that. I gotta change that. I'm my master right now. I like that. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, what we're gonna do now, okay, I'm just gonna shut this down, is um, we're gonna work on cutting the pattern out of our, our little piece of paper, okay? And, you know, mine, I got lucky. I don't need to trace anything. Okay, but some of you may have to trace something. And for that, I have my little tracing wheel. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, I'm going to have uh, Steven, yours needs to trace on the back skirt piece, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, bring your pattern up here, and I'm going to show you how to work this tracing wheel. <laughs> Need your extra piece of paper. All right, so I have to, you know, pick which piece I want to trace. I'm gonna put it over here to where it's uh, away from your sleep. that there's enough paper underneath the section I'm going to trace. This is the tracing wheel. This one has nice big teeth on it. That's the one you want. Now usually you, you want something underneath to kind of act as a little bit of padding, but you know, this will work for our purposes. And all I'm going to do is just run back and forth over the line. And what this does is this pokes holes through the paper and into the paper underneath that I'll be able to use as a guide to, you know, draw my pattern piece out. Now it's not going to be exactly the same. Um, I guess that you can use tracing paper for this. Um, if your paper's thin enough, you can just lay one over the next and just trace it out, you know. The idea is that I get something very, very close to what I just drew on this piece of paper. 
And if I can, I want to trace out the smallest section possible. That's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> you can see. Oh, look at those little holes. Isn't that cool? And then I can just take my pencil and I can go, oh, okay, here. And, then, and, uh, and just connect all these little dots. Yeah. If you want to use your ruler, you can use your ruler. Um, like I said, you want to find the tracing wheel with the biggest possible teeth you can. Um, leather, ones for leather working work really well because they usually have like spikes on it. Yeah, I found this one at Joanne's and I was like, wow, that's awesome! Because <laughs> you know, my other one has much smaller teeth on it. So this one works really well. That's, that's the best I've ever had one come out. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your sleeve here in a second. Okay. So, uh, what I want you to do, okay, after you do that, okay, see if you can take these. Uh, I'm going to use this. So, this is my pattern. Oh, I'm just going to start cutting it out. I want to cut it out along the lines of the pattern. Okay. Want to make life easy on yourself. Right, you know, first piece I'm going to cut out is this epaulet, just to show you how I cut it out. Okay. Now, there's no way all these curves are actually equal. Okay. So what we're going to do though is we're going to make them as equal as possible. Okay. So yeah, I got that my nice center line. Well, if I you guys remember made snow, snow snowflakes when you were a kid? Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to pick the curve I like the best. Uh, I kind of like that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll fold it half lengthwise, right along that lovely line I drew. Okay. Yeah. So I got my curve. I've got, got my folds you know, all nice. and Try to make your folds as exact as possible because, you know, I don't want bad overlap and, and all that kind of up. And then I'm just going to do my little snowflake method. Da -da -da. Oh, look. I have my first pattern piece. Isn't that cool? Yeah, and, oh, that's just scrap now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, what I usually do is I cut along this one right here so that, you know, I'm not having to, to deal with, and I, I don't want to cut into, you know, I cut a general line around the pattern and then I'll cut the pattern piece out to make life easy on myself. Okay? And, you know, and that way you're not trying to curve, go. You know, around the curves is always the hardest part. So, I mean, I find it easier, you know, to sit there and, you know, just, you know, Cut the straight lines first. <laughs> yeah. And this is why I was saying, you, know, you don't really have to worry about erasing lines because, you know. And what's really neat, and I'm going to cut this piece out just to show you what we're going to do with this here in a second. I got masking tape, so we're going to use that. Now, I will tape sections together and, you know, tape pieces of paper together because sometimes. I only have like a really small area of my pattern that overlaps another pattern piece, right? If I just trace out the little overlapping part, I can then just take the two pieces together and it makes life a whole lot easier. Rather than, you know, because like some of you, your, your sides seem overlapped, okay? So instead of tracing out like the entire back piece or the entire front piece, well, you trace out this little section of it right here, and then you'll just take that on and, and make that, you know. What's, a, what's eventually going to happen here, okay, let's see. Which direction things going? <laughs> is this piece is, like I said, it's going to get taped right there. Yeah. And they're going to tape together, boom, we'll have one big long sturdy piece. You see how that goes? You know, I'm going <laughs> to mark this so I can remember which two sides get taped together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I have uh, several extra pairs of paper scissors, if you don't have a pair, um, and you, you can start cutting out your pattern. Okay? Are we understanding any questions? Okay. Go for it. If anybody wants to draw my... Keep cutting. Keep, keep going. Okay. All right, Charles. Yes. Yeah.
Here's what you want to do. Okay. Right. I, I traced out this. Okay, so you trace out this piece here. I trace out from here to here. And then okay, so you, you just actually you really want to go a little further. Where did you trace it out? Up here. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm going to show you how to use it. stuff out, you know, Michelle doublet front, okay? Michelle doublet back, Michelle doublet sleeve, collar, skirting, applet, that kind of thing. Some people like to mark how many of each piece they're going to need to cut, okay? For instance, obviously Michelle's going to need more than one front piece because this only covers half her chest. So every time for every layer, we're going to have to cut two of these. So what we do is we write cut two per layer. Okay? So you know, so, you know for every layer you need, you're going to need two of these. Okay? This doublet pattern, or this collar pattern, you can see it's got a straight line there. If this is a curved line, you can't do this. Actually, we're going to use the back pattern. It's always a straight line. You see this back pattern has that straight line. You can see I wrote the word fold on there. When we cut our fabric out, we want to cut out equal pieces. The easiest way to do that, remember the old snowflake? Now we're only going to make one fold in the fabric. <coughs> so there will be a fold lengthwise in the fabric. Okay? That fold makes it real easy to cut out pieces. And then what I would do is I would open this up and I would have a solid back piece. When you can get away with it, you cut stuff on the fold because that eliminates a seam. If you don't cut this on a fold, you're going to have to put a seam right there. If you put a seam there, again, seams are weak points. Now, some fabric dictates that you can't cut it out on a fold. Period width fabric is 28 inches wide. Okay, yeah. You don't put a fold in period width fabric. It just doesn't happen because it's only 28 inches wide. You may fold it, you know, <laughs> and you have two pieces, but yeah, again, what you're going to end up doing is cutting out two of these and putting a seam there, okay? Because you just can't, okay? But since I have this, it's on a fold, I'm only going to need one of these cut on a fold to get the piece I need. You understand? All right, so here I wrote cut two per layer. Here I'm going to write cut one on fold, per layer. And again, I've labeled the side I want to be along the fold. Okay? That's how I label pieces. Okay? Um, the collar, we're going to need one on the fold. Okay? The epaulet, we'll need two per layer because you got one on this side and one on this side. When we use this piece, we'll actually fold it in half. <laughs> And that will be our epaulet piece. Okay? What's nice is we don't need to get linings on this piece. <laughs> it lines itself. Kind of neat. Alright? So this one, you only need to cut two out of the outer layer. That's it. You don't need any lining pieces for the epaulet. Because we don't need extra layers in the epaulet. It's just a decorative piece. So, you know, we're not going to need extra layers to make it a fighting legal doublet. So it's just a decorative piece. So on the epaulet, we just cut two, you know, on 
the fashion layer. That's what we call the outer layer, is the fashion layer. Okay? So the collar piece is another piece where it only gets cut out of the fashion layer. Okay? When we do the lining on the collar, you will see how we do the lining on the collar. It's done completely differently than the lining on everything else because we want to shape the collar and get it to stand up all nice and pretty. Okay? Special method called pad stitching. It's a lot of fun. It's real easy. Okay? So again, the collar piece, you need you only need to cut one, okay, out of the on the fold, out of the fashion layer. Yeah. Okay, that's all you're gonna need. So I mean different pieces have different things. Okay? Now, if you decided to put the little curve into this edge of the collar, obviously you can't cut that on the fold because now it has a curve in it. So you'll have to cut two out of the fashion layer. Okay? Skirting piece. Okay? This is usually done as two separate pieces around the body. So it's not usually cut on the fold. Plus, if you cut it on the fold, you get really weird designs if you have pattern. <laughs> in your fabric. So, you know, when we lay this out, we'll have to lay it out very quickly. And what I mean by lay it out, how we place it on our fabric to get the design we want to show on the fabric. But again, you know, this is also a piece that generally doesn't need the extra layers that you would put in the body of the doublet to make it fighting legal. Okay? This piece is, again, just almost purely decorative. And it always overlaps the pants as well. So again, it doesn't need the extra layers usually. So usually, I just cut, you know, two of these, one out of the fashion and one out of just one layer of lining, okay? But, you know, again, it's, it's still, you know, it's cut two per layer, but usually the only layers you need are the fashion and, and one layer of the lining, okay? And then the sleeve, again, you can see it has a mark on the fold, that's that long edge. Okay, you can see on the pattern here, that's the long edge. Not the sleeve length, the longer edge. Okay, because we want that cap to open up and to peak right there where there's not a seam. It just helps things and makes things all that much easier. Sometimes, because of your fabric, you don't have enough room to cut your sleeves both on the fold or on the fold because, you know, you just don't have enough fabric. Sleeves are one of the easiest things to change into a double seam garment. And so occasionally, you know, because uh, I don't have enough fabric, I'll cut this just, you know, two per sleeve. So again, you're going to need, you know, so cut two on the fold because you got two sleeves, you know, per layer. But if you're going to put a seam here instead of a fold, well, that means you need, you know, <laughs> Four per <laughs> layer. So, yeah, so, you know, on the fold, we can cut two on the fold per layer. Now, the SCA only requires that you have the extra layer in the top half of the sleeve. In fact, they really only require that you have it on the underarm. And some people will just put a piece of fabric on their arm. I don't like doing that. It makes life difficult. I usually just cut two per layer. It's just a lot easier, a lot easier to deal with. But again, if you're limited on fabric, well, you can, you know, for the layer, for the section that you need, you can just cut the top half. <laughs> you know, that's this part of the sleeve. You, all the layers you need for protection, and then the bottom half is just your fashion and your lining. You know, however you want to do it. But yeah. Uh, we're going to have some fun with Steven's sleeve. Steven wanted that weird folding out sleeve, right? So I made him cut out two sleeves. Ah, the way this works is, okay, first of all, that's what the sleeve pattern looks like when it's cut out. Isn't that pretty cool? <laughs> yeah. And so what we have, though, is we have a sleeve where we want a section to fold over this way and a section to fold over that way. And so what we're going to do, Stephen, come here real quick. Hold your arm up. Or measure down to his elbow. Okay, that's a measurement down to his elbow along the sleeve length. Okay. That's about where we want it to hit. Steven, come here a second real quick. 
Where'd you go? Why'd you run away? This is your sleeve I'm doing, man. <laughs> Hold your arm down flat, okay? I'll just make sure this measurement's correct, okay? And down to the oval, we have 12. Okay, I'm going to stay a little bit high. And then that was... Okay, yep, I ended up pretty tall. I marked it a little high the first time because I took two because he had his arm out. It's easier when his arm is down to make the right measurement. And then I'm going to take the exact same measurement, which ended up being 12 inches. I'm going to measure down from the cap that exact same measurement. It's going to give me a little bit of an angled line. And now I'm going to cut this pattern in half. Okay? Ah. Again, we want it solid where the cap is. Okay? This is going to tape over there. But this piece, which would go there, gonna put it over there and now we're gonna tape it together <laughs> okay so when it's complete this will fold over that way this will fold over that way you know and you know this will button up there it'll be perfect <laughs> yeah and you know because this is how it would normally go together so this side would normally connect to this side and that's why we pick this up and we just place it over there okay and you can see we have our cap it's all taped together, and that's our sleeve pattern. Now, I want it's really cool. Just so you guys can see it, this is awesome. Patterns of Fashion, one of our, our Bibles that we were talking about. Look at that pattern right there. Looks very close, doesn't it? If we, make, if we turn it this way, there's our pattern. It's nearly identical to it. Now, in the book, she reconstructs it a different way, okay? Uh, but after talking with Matthew Nagy and, and everything else like that, we figured out that this was actually the better way to reconstruct it, and it works out really, really well. That's that cool sleeve that I showed you the other day. So, uh, this is how, this is one of the ways you can play with patterns. Yeah, I make it out of paper, and I cut it up. When I made my spiral sleeves, did it pretty much the same way. I made the paper pattern, right? I taped it all together just like a real sleeve, and then I drew the spiral on it, and then I cut it out. <laughs> and I had this really big, long you know, piece of paper. It ends up being like three yards long. <laughs> yeah. But I was able to mark on it where it's supposed to connect up, and that way I was able to cut my pattern out. Okay, so you can play with this. You can have fun. You know, paper's easy. Paper's cheap. <laughs> you know, play with it and you can mark it up. All right? All right, so that's it for tonight. Um, we'll meet Friday again next week, hopefully, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, you will probably need your machines next Friday. So bring your machines, bring your fabric, bring your fabric markers. Uh, if you have an iron and ironing board that you can bring, we'll probably be able to yeah, be the most useful. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Man, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Good night, y'all. Good night. Thanks.